So I'm gonna make a quick video series on the first things I do when I spin up a new server in terms of security. So we're gonna cover some user setup, then we're gonna go on to configuring SSH, and then we are going to install some things to make sure SSH remains secure, in other words, something that monitors authentication attempts against your server, and then we're gonna configure our firewalls to make sure that only the traffic we want coming into our server is what we get. In other words, we're only gonna allow SSH and web traffic into our server and block everything else. So let's get started. We'll start with our user setup. I have a server set up here. It's actually an AWS server, but it doesn't matter what it is. It's not specific to this video course, except for the fact that I'm using an Ubuntu server. And in this case, we are gonna be using the latest Ubuntu LTS long-term support release, which is Ubuntu Focal 2004. So typically the first thing you wanna do is create a new user. In our case in Ubuntu on AWS, we actually are started as user Ubuntu instead of user root, but some cloud hosting like DigitalOcean or Vulture or Linode will give you a user root to begin with. And in either case, you typically wanna create a new user that's a little more secure. So for example, the user Ubuntu here can use sudo without needing a password, which isn't the most secure setup. So what you might wanna do is create a new user. So in order to do that on Ubuntu, the easiest way is to use the add user command. So we're gonna do sudo add user, and I'm just gonna make a new user named Fidelver. And here it's gonna create some stuff for me automatically, because the add user command does a little bit of magic, um, which is a little bit easier than the user add command, which is one that's more available across different platforms of Linux, but is a little more complicated. This does a lot of the work for you, like adding a new group, creating the user, of course, creating the user's home directory, and assuming it's a login user, so it adds a shell that you can log into, in this case, bash. So we'll make a new password for this. You should have something long and annoying. I'm just gonna make a quick and easy password for myself here, just for the sake of this video. You can see password updated successfully, and it's the passwd command, which is actually the command you type in if you ever wanna change your password in Linux. I'm gonna not fill in any of this information, which is very typical to skip. Is this information correct? Yes, and then I have this user. And I can tell I have a user, because I'll cat out the contents of the Etsy password file, and in here we'll see at the bottom there's a new user who has a UID, a user ID of 1001, and a group ID of 1001. I have a home directory of home Fidelifer and the default bash, which means I can log into this user, right? It doesn't have a no login shell. This has a default shell of bash, which is what we're gonna use right now. It's what we're actually using as I speak in here, right? If I echo the environment variable shell, it's gonna say I'm using bash which is the same thing that the user Ubuntu has. So I have this user of Fidelifer that is created on the server now, and we can do some stuff for this. So I'm gonna sudo su to change over to that user Fidelifer, go to my home directory, and we see that I have some basic stuff in here. And what we wanna do is make it so I can log in as user Fidelifer on the server. So we need to do a few things. First, I'm gonna make a directory called SSH in the server for this user. So I now have a .ssh directory for user Fidelifer, right? I'm in the current working directory of home Fidelifer. In, in this directory, the .ssh directory, I wanna create a new file called authorized keys. And this is gonna be the keys that are authorized to log in as user Fidelifer using SSH keys. And it's totally empty. So I need to go to my home computer here. I'm on my local computer, not a server and I want to choose an SSH key to use. So I can go into my SSH directory, and I have many keys in here, and you need to make a decision at this point. You can reuse SSH keys that are already there, and you probably already have one, or you can make a new one. And a good way to make a new one is using the SSH key gen command, and the ed25519 keys are the type, dash t is type, that are recommended now. Um, I'm getting this command from a blog post named, you should upgrade your SSH keys. So if you just Google upgrade your SSH keys, you'll find something like this. This is the one that's kind of the original blog post that I know of, and it gives you the command in the too long didn't read section, and it goes into explanation of why this is a good type of SSH key to make. So we'll make that, and then you can add a dash F flag to say what file you want to output, and I just call it id underscore ed, because ed is the beginning of the type of SSH key we're there, but you can name it anything. And if you do that, you just need a get the public key and add that to the authorized keys file of the other server. So I have quite a few things in here, so let's just search for IDRSA. And I have an IDRSA key, which is kind of your standard one that probably comes with your computer and is one that people often use for accessing other servers. 
instead of making a new key for every service. Although some people go ahead and make new keys for every service as well. Totally up to you. So I'm going to cat out the contents of idrsa.pub. So I need the public key in this case because the public key is what you share. You never share your private keys. And Mac has a handy thing where you can pipe out the command pv copy, which puts the contents of idrsa.pub into your clipboard so you can then paste it somewhere. So I'm just catting out the contents of this file, which outputs the content of this file, and then I'm piping those outputs to the pp copy command, which will put it into my clipboard, which means I can then head on back here to my server and insert it into this file, and that's the long ssh public key. And that is now the contents of the SSH authorized keys file on the server, which means I should be able to log into this server as user Fidel for now using that key. So we can test that out. I'll go back to here. This is the server I just logged into, except I, except I use the user Ubuntu and a different uh, SSH key. So this time I want to use user Fidel for, and I want to use my ID RSA key, right? So I have the dash I flag here saying I want to use this identity file, the SSH key file. And I'm in as user Fidel for. Perfect. So I'll exit that. We know that SSH works for user Fidelver and that is set up. So what we're going to do in the next video is add some SSH security to make sure that this server is set up in a way that we want in terms of who and how can access the server.